Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video. Take care. Okay, let's get started. So the purpose of this tutorial is that uh, traditionally DOS games were very difficult and complicated to run for some people. You had to get a command line and you're allowed to type in loads of directories using C drives and forward slashes, backward slashes. So a couple of years ago, a core came out called DOSBox Pure. And I think I should get that out there because there's a lot of DOS games which are really interesting and there's a lot of retro fans out there like myself who's never played most of these games before. So it's very simple to do and I'm going to use RetroWatch to get this up and running for you and this is very simple. So links in my description to download RetroArch. If we just go straight to the download section just here and just close this and just scroll down a little bit and what we're going to do is download ourselves the stable version of this so once this is downloaded we're just going to open it up and this is an installation so we'll go through the obvious processes of installing this to our hard drive or external drive wherever you fancy putting it so uh, by default it's going straight into my C drive and the folder is going to be RetroArch Win64 I'm running a 64-bit CPU so next with this and if I could just go back if you don't have DirectX 9 installed which you likely do at this day and age is pretty old uh, just check that and make sure that's installed as well And that will start extracting into the folder in our C drive. And this shouldn't take too long. So in the meantime, I've got a couple of DOS games on my desktop here. We've got Alien Trilogy and Alien Breed. What I'm going to do is just create a folder for these to pop into. And I'm going to just call this folder DOS Games. Or call that folder whatever you desire. It's all going to work out the same. So this is now finished installing, I'm just going to finish this and we no longer need this website so let's just close that down. So first thing I am going to do is go into where RetroWatch is installed and the quickest way of doing this is if you right click on the desktop shortcut, all we're going to do is go to show more options and I go to file location, that's open file location. And what I'm going to do next is to make things simple so everything's all in one place. I'm going to just drag this DOS games folder I just made inside here. So inside our main directory, we got everything here. And as you can see, this is in my C drive and the folder is called RetroArch. So very simple. Let me just show you where to find this. If you do the same installation as me, I'm going to just go to this PC. And I'm going to go to my C drive because that's where it went. And here it is. So this is the folder and this is the easy way to locate it. If you think you might get lost, you're not sure where it's gone. So we'll go back into this again. So everything's in one folder now. And inside DOS games folder I created, we've got the two DOS games. And these are in zip format. You don't need to extract these. They are fine. So let's go and open RetroWatch. So of course RetroWatch is now on the desktop. It's created the shortcut for us. So just double left click on that. So first thing you're going to want to do is use a controller. Luckily enough, RetroWatch actually detects it without configuring it straight out of the box. So that's really useful. So as always, PS3 control pad, my X button is essentially an action button. It lets us inside things. 
and the circle button just backs back out so that's pretty simple straight going so I'm not going to use this now but that's just to let you know that you don't need to configure this to use RetroArch so the next thing I'm going to do is download a core so if you're unaware what a core is a core is pretty much an emulator it's just a fancy word for it and cores uh, are kind of little plugins which work with RetroArch so to download a core as you just see I just went on to online updater so on my mouse I'm going to left click on this or if you're going to use the controller obviously press X and here we go so this is the core downloader just enter that and it's going to fetch a core list and this is every core every system RetroWatch supports and there's a hell of a lot of systems here core size which powers your games but for this tutorial, I'm specifically looking for this one. This is DOSBox Pure. Uh, came out a couple years ago, and it's very good. Uh, it's probably the easiest way via RetroArch or even LaunchBox, which makes playing DOS games very easy. So we've now downloaded that, and as you can see, this little hashtag indicates that we've installed that to RetroArch. We downloaded it. So if we back out of this, that circle on your controller, or you can write click on your mouse to back out so that's all done so the next thing we want to do if you remember a minute ago I put a couple of DOS games inside a DOS games folder so we need to import this to simplify things so once you open up RetroArch it's very easy to access so if we just go down to import content I'm going to go to scan directory obviously this is going to be pointed to our C drive and from here, I'm going to just scroll down. Until I find my RetroArch folder. And the directory I want this to scan to pick up those two games is in DOS games. So enter into that. And then all we do next is scan this directory. Left click or X on say your controller. And it's now finished scanning. So obviously the more games you've got for DOS, it's going to take a long time. So you've got a full collection. Uh, if you've got a couple like me, it will take seconds. So back out of this, right click, right click, right click, right click until we're back here, back to the main menu. So if we go down now using the cursor key or down on your D-pad or whatever you're using, we're going to see our games here and it's created a DOS logo. It's that simple. So we're actually going to get ourselves some cover art for these games. As you can see, they look a bit boring. We can put a light, bit of life to these. So all we're going to do is if we go to the main menu and we go onto online updater here, press X to enter that. If we just go down towards playlist thumbnails updater, we just enter this. And of course, DOS is the system we want the artwork for. So left click here. And as you can see at the bottom, it's indicated and it's checked that it's found the artwork. So if we back back out of this again, and we go back down to DOS, as you can see, Alien Breed has been successful, but unfortunately, Alien Trilogy hasn't, which isn't out of the ordinary. Some games, especially for systems like DOS, will find artwork. There's other ways to find and install the missing artwork, the thumbnails, uh, but that's what this tutorial is about. So next thing we're going to want to do here is actually load our DOS game and this is very simple. So we've now got our DOS on the left and if we just go over to the right with our D-pad or the cursor go right, we're going to open the game and to do this I'm going to just press X on my controller and if I go to run, we downloaded the DOS box pure core just a minute ago if you've got a several different cores for DOS you will have several different options which one to choose but to simplify things and get you up and running is DOSBox Pure which is without a doubt the easiest and the best way to do this through RetroArch so we're going to select that press X and as we can see core set DOSBox Pure and we're just going to go to run so if I press X on this Now once you get to this screen, this is going to be a one-time affair. All you need to do is look for the .exe, 
which is most relevant to your game. So a lot of these DOS games, they're going to have lots of X's and lots of bats. With a bit of common sense, you'll realize which one it is you need. Uh, so for example, for Alien Trilogy, I'm going to just go down to Trilogy.exe and all I'm going to do on this is press X. And there we go. Now, the problem is with some DOS games running on recent hardware is that they're going to be very fast, but there's a way around this to make this slower. We need to set DOSBox Pure to run, say, an older computer, so it's not as fast as it is. So let's exit this and press F1. So once I backed out of the game by pressing F1, I'm going to navigate to the quick menu and if we just scroll downwards, we're going to find core options. And from here, we're going to go and find performance options. Now, what I was saying a minute ago about games uh, going too fast on higher systems, rather, is we need to find a system setup which is more suitable for a game released in, say, the early to mid 90s. So, under emulated performance, if we just press X on this, we've got a range of different PC options, computer options. So these range from say 1997 to 2000. So for example, if I want to run my Alien Trilogy game at a really nice speed, I'm probably going to want to stick around to 1995, 100 megahertz Pentium, or perhaps a Pentium 2, 300 megahertz. Uh, for this, I'm going to just try 1995, which is the Pentium 100 megahertz. So I'm going to press X on this and I'm going to back out and I'm going to back out again and again. And if I just go to quick menu, select this and resume. Now, as you can see here, it's actually a bit slower now and that's more at the speed we want this running at. So configuring your controller for this is another matter altogether. But these games were designed really for keyboard and mouse. So I'm going to just use my keyboard and mouse. So that's Alien Trilogy running at a fairly decent pace. It's maybe a little slight bit fast, so maybe you should try for perhaps the Pentium 2 to emulate that one instead. Maybe that might be a bit more suitable. But by far, this is a better experience than what we had just a minute ago. So let me show you some accounts. We're obviously going to want to make this full screen. So press F1 to get into your Retro Watch menu. And for this, to back out, of course, I'm going to be using Circle on my controller. Or if you're on your mouse, then press right. Click that is. And from here, we're going to go to Settings. And we're going to go to Video and we're going to go to full screen mode. So what we need to do here to make this in full screen is we just press X on the start and full screen mode. And there we go. So we are now back in full screen mode. And let me load up Alien Trilogy once again, or I'm going to resume it. There we go. It's looking a little bit better, but little bits of tweaking here and there. So let's just press F1 to back out of this again. You can also save states once you use F1 to exit back out the game, go to the main menu. As you can see, if you just scroll down just a slight, we can save state. If we press X on this, we've saved it to slot zero. So let's play this game a little bit longer. Okay, so let's load back up that state I've just saved. So if we press F1 again, I'm going to go to load state, press X, and there we go, we're back in the same place as we saved from. Awesome stuff. Let me show you some other things we can do to clear up this visual we got. So if we press F1 again to back out and press circle or right click, and again, we go up to settings. If we go to video and we go to scaling, 
you've got different options here. So for example, we've got aspect ratio, and at the moment this is on core provided. As standard, it's gonna be a almost four by three ratio. Uh, so let's try 16 by nine, which is sometimes my favorite. Just select that, and I'm gonna press circles come out, and out again, and out again, main menu, and resume. So as you can see, we are now in a 16 by nine ratio. And granted, these games don't look tremendously brilliant on this type of ratio, but we can clean this up further. So once again, let's press F1 to get back into the menu. I'm gonna press circle, and I'm gonna go back to settings. And if I go back to video, and go down to scaling, I'm gonna press integral scale to on. And I'm gonna back back out this once again. Quick menu, resume, and from here, we got a slightly smoother image. Those big polygon looking things are slightly gone in there. It's almost a bounce of blur to the image, which looks a bit more satisfactory. But of course, we've still got this on a 16 by nine ratio and this game wasn't designed for that. So let's change this back to the core provided and see how this looks with the integer scaling on. So F1, back out, settings, video, scaling, and aspect ratio again. So I'm gonna go back to the core provided, back out, quick menu, and there we go. So the image is slightly compressed, but it looks a lot better and more tidy than it did just a minute ago. So almost on par, if not a little bit better, with say the PS1 version of this game or the Saturn version. And finally, you need to save all your configurations for Retro Arch or there's a good chance you will lose all your settings. So to do this, of course, we press F1 to go back into the Retro Arch menu. And if we back out of this, I'm gonna go down to configuration file and I'm gonna save new configuration. Just press X and that's it, you're done. So that's about it. And finally, one last thing, if you plan on using Retro Arch, a lot. I would recommend you frequently update it for core updates, whatever. So to do this, just go onto the online updater and you've got several different options here. Uh, we've got update core info files, update assets and so on. So just press X on each one of these and trust me, it does it. The world of goods from time to time. So with that done, let's just quit out of RetroArch and just wait for this one to extract and quit. So that's it, that's DOSBox Pure for you Retro Watch. So granted, there's a lot to remember, but if you slow and pause this video down, you'll get it in the end. It's just a simple case of remembering, say circle on a say PlayStation controller is gonna back out of things. X is gonna act, is an action button as it were. And F1 is gonna bring you into the Retro Watch menu when you're playing a game. So there's a lot there to remember. And I'm hoping that someone out there is going to get a use out of this. And like I say, DOSBox is a very decent core. DOSBox Pure, that is. There's a lot there to learn from. So anyway, please hit the notifications. You're going to miss a ton of new content coming fairly soon, which I know you're going to enjoy, especially those for front-end systems such as RetroArch. If you've not checked out my other front-end videos as of yet i've got batacera i've got retro bat i've got a lot but just remember to hit those notifications and until next video i'll see you next time